And um, lastly, I think we can talk about this one. This is a topic courtesy of Vulture. It's an interesting topic to talk about because I just want to kind of um, gauge people's impression about these sort of things, right? So this is an uh, article of courtesy of Vulture and it's covering a podcast I listen to quite often called How Long Gone. I think that comes out three times a week, um, hosted by Chris Black and Jason Stewart. Um, also known as uh, Done to Death and um, Dem Jeans on social media. So I guess if you're around the whole like menswear, streetwear, culture, hype beast, whatever industry scene thing, you might have seen them around being shared and retweeted. Um, and the podcast kind of came out of nowhere for me. I didn't really know they were doing one together. Um, I had followed Chris Black on Twitter on and off here and there because his personality is quite annoying to basically follow online. He's kind of those kind of eternally pessimistic contrarian types that's always trying to put out hot takes and go against the grain of what people like and don't like it just gets annoying after a while you know when someone consistently just keeps putting out hot take after hot take after hot take i was like you know what? i'm gonna stop so i just unfollowed him in general but then you know now that i've got a lot more people on my social that i follow up to a thousand i think i'm following more than a thousand maybe it, I, I don't basically see his tweets too often so i think that's why basically made it good but the podcast itself i think is a good it's a better way to enjoy him as a person because i think he him and um jason's relationship is really cool so they bounce off each other really well so even though chris black as a person himself is a pretty um uh, he can turn you off a bit, right? His personality, he can, he's can he's not the most likable guy in the world. I think he can even admit that himself. But I think because Jason is so likable, it kind of, they rub off each other well, rub off, you know, you know what I mean, right? They kind of bounce off each other really well. And the podcast has done really good over the short space of time it's been around. But it's also been weird to see all these placed um, editorial write-ups being put in places, right? I don't know if they're paying for them. I don't know if they've got a really good publicist, but it's a very um, interesting approach to market a podcast where it's obviously m mostly guest led, even though I think the individual ones are really good. I have to be honest. I think I kind of enjoy the, the ones where they're just doing it themselves without guests than I do with the guests because the guests, it really depends if they've got a vibe and because they're always doing it over Zoom or Skype or whatnot, to have that kind of banter that they obviously have between each other, Jason Stewart and, and sorry, and um, Chris Black, they have a very um, particular kind of banter between the both of them. If the other person doesn't necessarily vibe, it doesn't work. Like a good one I think of is that girl from Japanese Breakfast or that girl that uses the Monarchy of Japanese Breakfast. She was a bit of a bitch when she went on the show. Again, not her fault, but you know, she didn't vibe with the guys, but it just didn't work because they weren't in front of each other. She just didn't like their personality and their interests and they, it just made for a shit podcast. But when they're on their own, they're pretty good. But there's no denying that it's very guest led and there's no denying they were very strategic in terms of getting big guests, but also getting guests with maybe followings online, guests that maybe would immediately kind of um, generate some sort of write-up in these kind of publications. But it's very weird to see so many write-ups about a podcast that not a lot of people listen to. Again, in, in, that, in kind of the overall sense of the things. Again, my podcast isn't necessarily anything to write home about, but let's just talk about it in general. It's very interesting to see so many write-ups on these kind of publications about podcasts hardly, hardly anyone listens to that's also very guest-led just feels a bit odd do you know what I mean it just feels a very very odd um but i guess you know maybe these places don't really have many things to write about and this is a good way to kind of cover culture and what's going on especially during the pandemic times because it feels like this podcast came about during the pandemic because i guess they had they couldn't do whatever they did normally so why not start this new project and see where it goes and now it's turned into this whole business they're signed to a label they're doing live shows so this is fucking smashing it the merch is great but it just feels a little bit it feels a little bit payolery that's it. it just feels a little bit payolery like it just feels a little bit like are these guys your friends that are writing these things are you paying for them why are you keep getting like it's just it feels a bit too forced and i, I don't know whatever things are forced down your throat or especially my throat i tend to gag first of all and also i tend to question why somebody's forcing something down my throat like is the reality better than what they're presenting i don't really know i'm not too sure but let's quickly read over the article Cut to the vulture it says why are all your cool friends listening to how long gone chris black and jason stewart on their bro culture podcast unexpected appeal it says on a crisp october evening um the line to get into the bowery ballroom was long enough to wrap around the block it was filled with lower manhattan and brooklyn types hoodies denim jeans good jackets demographic lots of men <laughs> mostly white 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's many black people listen to this podcast. I might be one of the few, especially a black English dude. Um, but anyway, continue. Um, lots of men, mostly white, mostly working in media or advertising or fashion or something adjacent. Yeah, I don't work in any of those fields, so it's cool. Um, a few spots uh, down for me. Two guys were talking podcast networks and Spotify deals between pause from a vape pen. So yeah, you have to be very, this is a true, this is a very for the heads podcast. It's not for a casual listener. You have to be very innocent. But to be honest too, I enjoy these guys way more than the, who's the other guys? Um, falling, is it failing upwards, falling upwards, right? Falling upwards. I think, I don't get that humor. I think that they're a little bit too um, uh, cartoonish for me, right? In that regard. That's what I mean. Or maybe because I'm I'm similar in age to, the, or no, no, they're way older than me, isn't it, Chris? But yeah, but I don't know. Whatever it is, I prefer the how long gone to like the, the the falling upwards or the failing upwards, whatever it's called. Um, anyway, it continues. Playing the ballroom that night, a storied venue usually reserved for indie bands and the likes of Patti Smith was How Long Gone, the so-called by Coastal Elite podcast hosted by Chris Black and Jason Stewart. Um, the tour would include 11 cities, but the Nashville show and a few nights had been scrapped owing to low ticket sales. Tonight's gig, however, was sold out. By the time the curtains lifted, the room was packed light, tightly, so barely a wiggle room to be found in the crowd. A bit of a par there, including the lack of ticket sales, but we move. The show was a bit of a mess, however. Ew. Against a backdrop, a background sports correspondent credit for anchor the spotify division that frequently advertised on the show black and stewart kicked off the night festivities with what amounted to a short somewhat a bit obvious set raging on the cities that they had just played stewart went for an alec baldwin joke just a few days after the rush shooting incident it landed like a fud the interview segments were all over the place stilted and awkward in equal measure even if the nice guests were intriguing, interview magazine editor in chief Mel Ottenberg, comedian Lauren Cerevidio, anonymous downtown personalities and podcasters I unpack, Alyssa Roman, an early guest of the podcast, was supposed to appear at the night but ultimately wasn't able to make it. Roman decided she had to go upstate or something, said Black on stage. I'm assuming she was uh, making kimchi out of ramps, some important business thing, said Stuart. But to be honest to this article, to be fair to them though, Live podcast has never been a vibe for me. I never understand people that go to them. Maybe to go, maybe understand the appeal to go to a live podcast if you want to just have a sense of community because I guess it might be quite fun to go and meet people who are also into this, you know, niche podcast that you listen to every three times a week. Or maybe if you want to go and actually buy merch in hand because I know sometimes these podcast networks or these podcast shows in general, they take ages to ship shit. So if you want to actually buy stuff in hand and actually go back home with it, maybe it's a good way to kind of, you know, uh, bump this line in that way. But I never thought the idea of going to a live show where somebody just sits on the stage and speaks the way I'm speaking was any fun, especially if it's not done in a very structured way. I'm sure there's ways to make it work, but it have to be very not interactive, but it have to be done like a product, like a show, like you actually putting on an actual like Broadway show, an actual performance, right? Where you have segments and you have things rehearsed and bloody blah and cue points. That might be a way to do it. But again, that also requires a lot of effort and maybe a lot of money, a lot of time, blah, blah, blah. And I assume most of these places the hiring fee is already a lot so is the equipment fee and all that stuff and if you're a podcast you just want to get on there and do what you do because you think if people are buying tickets they're buying tickets under the guise that we're just going to do what we do on the podcast anyway so why go the extra step do you understand but it sounds tough it says here for the most part the crowd that might seem to enjoy just being there though it did not occur to me that Sorry, though, though it did occur to me that given the podcast's clicky appeal, many of the 500 or so people in the room were probably connected to the host, at least to some degree. It was tricky scene to pass. <laughs> so what they're saying, they're saying that they sold all their tickets to their friends. You know, this article isn't the most glowing anyway, to be fair. Um, how long in general, uh, sorry, how long gone in general can be a tricky phenomenon to wrap around your head? Over the past year, the show said it's had quietly, um, but clearly become a favourite podcast among what normies like myself might like to call the cultural insiders, those in the know, or more simply the quote-unquote cool people fans include the playwright jeremy o harris the new york times pop music critic john carmichael and the call your friend sorry and call your girlfriend co-host um amini tau stowe though it should be noted that two of these individuals have been guests on the show before the two podcasts have broken the podcast has broken into a regular listening rotation as well though i'm still trying to figure out why it says i quote to me it's extremely inside baseball micro scene report says carmichael so it says Cara Mancy. Kara Manisi. How do you say that name? Karaman Karamanika. Karamanika? 
Um, an early guest on the show said when I asked him about his apparent resonance um, with the culturally hip a lot of what Chris and Jason are doing is skipping the text for the meta text there's a lot of unspoken foundational knowledge since its launch and as pandemic project in March 2020 how long gone has endured several rounds of buzz this included a glowing profile in Vogue again all these profiles is it payola is it real who knows um last november another one in new york times shortly before the start of the tour the announcement of the tour made the rolling stones and it came packaged with another mark of prestige in what appears to be the first podcast to be signed with, with a deal with a jag jaguar a vaunted indie rock label that reps the likes of bon Iver and angel olsen um the deal involves the production of a peculiar artifact, How Long God Adds Color, a double CD containing a curated list of 11 songs that the Cross Jagger Jagger's universe with an interst so with an interst interstitial how do you say that right commentary provided by black and stewart sample color i didn't realize sharon von vetten von sorry sharon van eaton was in the twin peaks reboot did you catch that i barely caught that in the first twin peaks tough to follow even the drugs the set comes out this week oh that's tough um the uninitiated 25 years she did how long gone can be a hard sell it's partly uh due to the substance being hard to pin down but mostly to do with the host being exaggerating exasperating to its observers including many of the colleagues for example these reactions are reasonable i don't deny it to begin with any description of how long gone probably has led to how the podcast hosted by two straight white dudes who use the platform to deem whatever things are in culture a culture that is rapidly shifting away from and actively negotiating this relationship with straight white dudes to meet their standards of cool and uncool ah you can fuck off all that shit it's a cool podcast the guys are cool one the one of the hosts is really annoying and kind of you know a bit of a turn off but you can't stop listening to him and the other one's really funny so when you get them both in a room it works it just is what it is isn't it um and they obviously have interesting guests on that people want to listen to they had lena dunham on recently i skipped that completely because you know she seems like a bit of a nightmare to listen to in general and all that stuff she did with odell beckham kind of turned me off as a person again great artist but i'm not listening to her talk can't do that but in general the guests are pretty decent i listened to alison roman episode recently today and i thought that was enjoyable um it says here you could barely you can really see the problem here um actually listening to an episode can be a gamble too the two men are prone to discuss music fashion parties and brands expensive restaurants and luxury goods in no particular order but with a very particular kind of confidence whether expressing disdain for the fandom around the succession or extolling the virtues of flying delta one they seem motivated by a strong belief that corners remains a thing that challenge exist can be attained and desirable all this results in a specific aggressively tribal vibe um describable as a shock jock light or generally in the direction of being an arsehole depending on your taste yeah that's a fair uh, description of it i think being cool is fairly desirable still i don't think there is such a thing as being uncool as being cool i think people that even are trying to be uncool are still cool in their own way so this whole idea that there is no good and bad things in culture there is no such thing as good and bad art good and bad restaurants good and bad parties is absolutely nonsensical we've all been to shit parties we know what they are we don't repeat those experiences we've all eaten a bad meal especially at places where you've been told it's the greatest place on earth and then you go and it's a complete letdown you don't want that to be repeated again because it's a waste of money waste of time and it fucking annoys you so if somebody wants to point you the right direction via a podcast and let you know hey go there don't go here that's a pretty much a good thing you know they're doing a good service and also they may be refining your taste palette and the way that you view things um i don't think that's a bad thing this this whole um this whole acceptance of mediocrity we have in culture now at the moment is horrendous man <clears throat> But yeah, it's a long article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's a bit longer than that, but just wanted to point out that regard. Again, if you're list struggling to something to listen to, especially if you like the kind of stuff that I talk about, definitely check out How Long Gone, um, available wherever you get podcasts, available wherever you get podcasts.